Okay, we are live again on Facebook and uh, appreciate everybody that's uh, going to start joining us here. I know it takes a while for it to kind of get up and running and uh, uh, I know a lot of people watch this later. Um, so, um, But if you ever have any comments, um, questions, go ahead and throw those in there. Um, I'll try to get back to you either on this or um, even later on, you know, when I'm looking at Facebook and things like that. So I uh, want to thank Mike Hendrickson again for joining me uh, yesterday. Uh, Mike does a great job of uh, talking me up and, uh, you know, talking about what I do and uh, making me sound better than I actually am. And I uh, appreciate uh, his words uh, yesterday. Uh, you know, this is a tough time for everybody, and uh, obviously, Higher Power Sports is no different. You know, we're, you know, we rely on donations and, and fundraisers in our fundraising uh, campaign for April. We had about four uh, fundraisers that we've have, had to postpone. So, appreciate all the support out there um, from all of you that are are, are sending stuff in and uh, looking at ways to help me in the future. And we got some exciting things um, planned on the. Uh, horizon on the on that end as well I want to get right to our guest because uh, my guest is uh, got a great story um, it's gonna be way too much to get in in this uh, half hour or so but hopefully we'll have him back maybe a later and we can continue talking because I think it's gonna be awesome and uh, I don't know if you can see Chris probably can't see it but I have they said uh, Facebook live 80% of the people watch it without the sound you know, which isn't good for us yep. with, you know, our <laughs> ugly mugs. But I actually put your name under my Probably. TV here. Probably better for them, as long <laughs> as they don't have to hear. <laughs> yeah. So, my guest today is Chris Maxwell, and uh, Chris is joining me from his home in Pier, I believe. And uh, Yeah, Fort, Fort Pier. Fort Pier, technically. West River. Uh, a, a West River guy now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> So, Thanks for having me, Tim. Yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate you have, uh, coming on and, and sharing s some things with us. Let's get right start, started right away. Obviously, you're, you're a Parkston guy. You're like me. You're a Parkston guy. Uh, you know, maybe give yep. the, the people out there that don't know Chris Maxwell a little background of you know growing up and, and where you've gone and where you've been. Sure. Uh, blessed to be a Parkston guy to have grown up, grown up in Parkston. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, my dad, dad was from Parkston, uh, uh, grew up in a, in a big family, family of six kids. Um, uh, a lot of people, uh, in our area had knew, knew a Maxwell of some, sub, some, <laughs> some age, uh, the 20 years between my oldest brother and my youngest brother. Um, we, we spanned, uh, spanned a lot of, lot of years in, in, uh, our part of the state of South Dakota and uh was blessed uh, uh wonderful parents uh, mom had a preschool in our basement dad uh, uh sold insurance and real estate in in parkston with pat moore there for many years and and uh, have brothers there right now uh that are working in the business as well as pat's pat's son and uh, mom is still there in parkston as as well and and so um really had you know uh what was the uh, idyllic childhood uh from uh uh, you know, gr growing up in my younger years, uh, all the way through uh, through my high school days, uh, Parkston just w was a wonderful, amazing place to uh, to come from. Still is an amazing place. I'm really proud of being from there. And uh, um, I, as I've said to many people along the way, um, I think it really set me up set me up for the life I wanted to live. Um, uh, gave me a, a wonderful base underneath my feet and taught me about all the right things and and gave me the structure that's helped me to become the person that I am today. Uh, but also uh, uh, being in a in a rural rural place in the in the north central part of the United States, it also gave me a real healthy sense of adventure. Um, wanting to go off and see the world and and see all those things we learned about in uh, history class and current events class and so so um, was lucky to play play every sport and in every uh, uh, extracurricular from band to chorus and and uh, um, just all of those activities and just loved loved doing all of them uh, was lucky enough to go off and play college sports play college basketball. Um, went to the University of South Dakota my first couple years and was on the team there and, and had some just amazing friendships and was an amazing growing opportunity for me. And then I, I transferred to Mount Marty College and finished up my my last two two years playing there as well and had some, some wonderful experiences there 
um, some successes there as a, as a team and, and uh, um, just a lot of fun and a lot of growth that happened uh, there as well. And, and from there went off, uh, lived in Omaha for a couple of years, um, uh, moved back to Sioux Falls for a few years, uh, married my amazing wife. Uh, in that that time frame, we were in Sioux Falls for a while, and then a uh, career took me up to the Twin Cities uh, for for five or six years, um, uh, uh, and then eventually, my wife and I had my had our first little one, and decided it was time to move back closer to home. And my wife, uh, being from Pierre, uh, 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 we decided to to move back and have been back here now for a uh, little over little over nine years and so uh it's been been wonderful we now have uh four four amazing little kids uh benjamin samuel isaac and hannah they are uh 10 7 four and one almost two and so we are running and chasing and enjoying the sweet chaos that is our life so absolutely i i can't imagine having the four kids that young and and you know trying to keep the just the schedules of each one of them uh it's got to be amazing uh every day in your house yeah no it's uh um you know like like any anyone with uh, anyone with kids um anyone with uh with a few kids you know it is uh um uh, certainly has its chaotic times it it has an amazing energy to it all and um you know as those as those that we know that have kids that are that are all older than ours that are in the the seven to ten years older than ours they tell us it only get gets busier busier from here so we're just trying to enjoy this downtime that we have right now absolutely i want to a couple things about parkston um your dad and my father-in-law played on the uh, 1966 uh state championship game um so we have a little connection there and uh, absolutely, you know, that's still, you know, a huge, you know, bragging point or a very proud moment in Parkston history. Uh, the 97 team was just uh, the game was just played and your brother Mike was on that team and they lost in the state championship. Uh, yep. How did your high school career end? Uh, well, it, it ended a few games earlier than I would have would have like to um uh like i said i was i was uh um blessed to be able to play a lot of sports uh growing up um uh re and really loved loved them all and they all were probably my favorite at, at different times along the way um but basketball certainly seemed to be the one that i excelled at the most and you know uh we had some we had some really good teams um uh, uh my senior year um uh, was lucky enough to be to be named on the the first team all state team and and we had a team that uh, only ended up with two losses in the whole year um, uh, one one to the number one team in class B uh, that year which was Avon um, uh, and uh, Terry Becker actually the head basketball coach at Pier uh, right now uh, was on that team at Avon and he and I actually were on the basketball team together at Mount Marty. Um, as well, uh, but lost to them during the regular season, and then um, uh, unfortunately we well, unfortunately we lost in the district championship my my senior year to to McCook Central, and uh, they had a, they had a really good team that year. Um, uh, they actually ended up losing in in the region tournament to Del Rapids. Uh, which uh, connection there for me, uh, both at my USB and my Mount Marty days. Uh, Jeremy Kudera and I were on the basketball team together at, uh, at, at USD for a year there before I transferred. And then one of Jeremy's best friends from high school, Tom Miller, was on the Mount Marty basketball team there as well. So uh, as we all know, South Dakota gets to be a small state really quickly, and uh, um, you know those those stories pull us all in uh, in pretty quickly. Uh, yeah. We could probably tell a lot more <laughs> stories about Parkston and how our families all connect. And you know, my dad, my dad coaching you, or or uh, um, you know, all the different things that intertwined our brother, our brothers graduating from high school together. The stories go on, right? Absolutely. I, I want to try this. See if I can. I'm gonna move this camera, and Chris, you won't be able to see this, but hopefully you can hear me. Uh, yeah. Small world, if outside my attic window, 
Um, you can see across the street there, um, the yellow house across there is where uh, Chris's grandpa and grandma lived, and then right next to that house over there was uh, where you grew up, Chris. So I can see your house and your grandparents' house from where I'm sitting right now. So again, a small it. world. Uh, Chris, pretty, pretty, pretty sweet spot, sweet yeah, corner of the world. Absolutely. Chris, uh, you know, let's talk about the last year or so, about the last 12, 14 months in your life. And um, sure. some people know your story, but a lot of people listening probably don't know your story. What can you tell us about the last year? Yeah, so um, uh, so it would have been um, early early to mid February, a uh, little over a year ago. Um, uh, uh, I uh, um, uh, end of a end of a normal normal week in February had been kind of a busy time for us. Uh, we we uh, uh, had the four kids at the time, but the uh, young youngest of ours would have really only been seven eight months here eight seven or eight months old and um uh, i was busy on the work front had had a couple of new employees start and, and had some new projects kicking off um i have my own uh, strategy and consulting firm here in, uh, based out of uh, peer for peer and um i was working with some clients on some strategic planning things that were coming up and i started to get some numbness and tingling in my feet um, uh, at the time, um, I work remotely quite a bit. And so I've had some, never been diagnosed with carpal tunnel, but figure I could have it in some ways. Um, and so, you know, I've had different kind of issues with my wrists and, and, and I thought maybe that was where the finger things were coming from. And it was early February in South Dakota. I just thought my toes were kind of cold and they weren't warming up. Um, and so, so I was just, uh, um, uh, uh, kind of, kind of weirded out by these, this numbness that I had in these two different places, but not thinking too much of it. And so wrapped up a week, went into the weekend. It kind of continued through the weekend. And then I, you know, speaking of basketball, had a city league basketball game on a, on a Sunday night, uh, went and played city league basketball. Um, nothing out of the, out of the ordinary, um, uh, slower than I, than I used to be, uh, <laughs> um, uh, still, still, uh, still, Still, still out there having fun though, and um, uh, had had dove or maybe it was a fall. I don't know. A little clumsier than I used to be too. Um, uh, but but you know nothing nothing terrible there either. And got home that night, and all of a sudden I had had some some back pain that was really starting to bother me, and it, it was really bad. And and uh, um, I didn't really remember landing on my back, but thought maybe there was something to that. And so I got through that night and, you know, this time in our lives, there's a lot of things going on, busy with family, um, had some work stuff coming up. And so I was, I was kind of focused on that. And so, you know, it's kind of gut it through till the next, uh, um, next break in the action was kind of my attitude. And so I was just going to get through to Wednesday after my meetings on Tuesday. And so went through Monday and, and, uh, uh, had some work stuff I got done and, and kind of had some back pain again that night and couldn't sleep. And, and Tuesday uh, was getting ready for my meetings. And as I was walking into the meetings, um, the wind, it was it was a cold wind, but, you know, nothing different than a usual February, um, kind of blew, blew and hit, hit my pant leg as I was getting out of the car. And it felt like um, somebody had splashed a bucket of cold water on my uh on my right leg it was it, it was this i'd already had 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 a lot of weird sensations to that point with all of this and uh um uh that kind of just put me over the top and i finally said okay the next day i'm gonna um I, or that after my work thing i'm gonna call my doctor and get in to see him and see if i can get in the next day and and so i did um i explained it to my doctor and he said you know it's see you, you might think some of those things might connect but um, that just doesn't make sense. So come in and, and let's check it out. I don't want to just overlook this. And I was lucky enough. So I went in the next morning and, and I was lucky enough to have a good friend who was that doctor that I had not really asked him any medical questions uh, in all the time we'd known each other. Uh, so he, he figured if I was calling him about something, there must be something that was really bothering me. And and so he started he started testing me out and things just weren't adding up and 
And uh, I was feeling a little more and more fatigued as we were having our conversations. And and I did all the tests. I did MRIs and and uh, um, and and X-rays, and nothing showed up. And he didn't think they would, anyways. But nothing showed up, and and it started ruling out some of the fear dreaming I had done in my head uh, uh, about could it be some sort of cancer or tumors or something that we can't, you know can't guess what could be hitting us. You hear stories of people that have those kind of crazy things that happen and they've got crazy sensations. Um, and so we, we, we went even further into the day and he said, I want you to check in for observation into the hospital. Um, uh, I don't know what it is, but you've got something and it's not adding up. And so I went in and they had me go to the ER and they did a, they did a spinal tap to check the, the spinal fluid which was supposed to rule out what they ended up finding out that I had, but it was too early that they couldn't tell yet, which I found out later happens to a lot of people in my situation. Um, but so they checked me into the hospital, um, uh, stay overnight, and by the next morning, they had di diagnosed me with a rare autoimmune disease called Guillain-Barre syndrome. And Guillain-Barre syndrome uh, basically is a, is a syndrome where it's not a virus that attacks your body or a bacteria. It's actually a, some, something in your body. They think it's a virus of some sort, uh, basically confuses your immune system and causes your immune system to now start looking at your body as the enemy. And with Guillain-Barre syndrome, um, uh, what it does is it starts t attacking your peripheral nervous system. So everything outside of your, your spinal, spinal cord, spinal column, um, all, everything there. So it's attacks it from the outside in. It basically goes from the furthest part of your body uh, out and comes all the way into the core. Well, hopefully it doesn't come all the way into the core of your body. Um, as I was care flighted to Sioux Falls that day, and they started me on uh, IVIG, um, uh, intravenous immunoglobulin, uh, uh, I'm sure I didn't pronounce that right, uh, um, uh, treatments, they, um, uh, they kind of shared with us that the goal is to try to keep this from progressing beyond um, you having paralysis and fatigue in your legs and in your, you know, your hands and your arms. And, you know, ultimately what they try to do is to get it to stop before it gets to the core of your body and causes it to impact your breathing and kind of your core autonomic system. Um, I drew the lucky or unlucky straw of having this onset be about as severe as you could possibly have. Um, uh, I, I eventually, after being in, in the ICU at Avera McKinnon and back in the neuroacute area, um, was completely paralyzed, um, on a feeding tube, uh, had a, had a tracheotomy and, and on a trach breathing on a ventilator, uh, my eyes not blinking, my, my wife having to blink for me and, um, uh, uh, hard to explain the ego stripping process that you go through with all of that. Um, even harder to think about uh, my wife and my kids and my family and my friends having to see me uh, go through that and slip off into that, uh, um, that paralysis point. Um, <clears throat> but they were there all along the way. Um, they had to figure out our life and what was going on with our life at that time. They had to figure out what was next for me. Um, and, uh, uh, as they did that, what they found out was, uh, heading to the Madonna rehab hospital in Lincoln, Nebraska was the next closest place to, to get to. Um, <clears throat> luckily for us, it's a world-class facility. Um, <clears throat> as, as wonderful of a place as you could find, um, uh, started by those same Benedictine sisters that started Mount that that lead Mount Marty College. Uh, they helped start that uh, the monastery that's in Yankton helped start that same facility down in Lincoln, Nebraska, uh, many years ago, and so had a connection there. And um, I started the long road back. Um, I also lost sixty pounds in my uh, time as uh, um, time in the hospital, in the ICU, and in the neuroacute areas. And so um, I had to figure out how to gain 60 pounds of muscle, all muscle you lose. You don't lose any of the fat, none of that little stomach that everybody builds up along the way or any of the extra weight that you have. That doesn't go anywhere. It's right there when you wake up, but your muscle is what all disappears. 
And, um, and so I started rehabbing and, and the rehab includes everything. It's like a total rebirth, everything from learn, relearning how to, how to use your eyes and have your eyes function again together and, and relearning how to use your mouth and, and control water and food in your mouth to, you know, figuring out how to sit up again and, and, and getting the strength enough and the, um, the, the, physical awareness enough to, to, you, you know, use your arms and, and start, start after, um, my first, my first three months were spent in the acute care area, which is also, you're learning how to breathe again. You're figuring, you're trying to get off the ventilator, um, uh, going through just the whole, um, uh, acute care side of it, trying to get your body back into a place where you can, and I was rehabbing the whole time, but where you can rehab, and, uh, um, and and actually, you know, get in a gym and start doing the physical exercise there. Um, I then I then uh, um, eventually graduated from that that uh, long term acute care part of it to the acute rehab area, and got to get into what is called a local map machine, which actually walks for you and teaches you again how to walk, how to have your body do the movements that uh, um, that you used to know how to do naturally. Uh, we got in the pool and did a lot of pool therapy. And, and uh, um, I've shared it many times with people. Um, there's kind of a three-legged stool to your recovery. And, you know, one, one of the legs is actually um, having the nerves regenerate. So luckily this autoimmune disease um, allows the, the, uh, nerves regenerate. So they regrow. So your body starts to regrow. Um, the second thing you have to do once that starts is you've got to, um, uh, your, your mind body connection has to happen again. So you have to have, uh, um, your brain and your, your, your body, uh, the Wi-Fi and your phone or your computer have to ping each other and be communicating again. Um, and then eventually you have to be strong enough. So you have to actually gain that muscle, muscle, uh, back. And, and so I started on that slow journey. It's a, it's kind of a, um, patience and persistence kind of thing. You have to be patient in some, some cases and keep plugging away and pushing at it in other cases and do it all at the same time. Um, uh, in a lot of cases and eventually, and which my goal was and, and, they told me I'd, I'd likely roll out of there in a wheelchair and not that I wouldn't have a chance to, to walk again, but it probably wouldn't, wouldn't be until uh, probably closer to the first of the year, the beginning of 2020, that I'd start doing that again. Uh, but I walked out of that facility at, at uh, the Madonna Rehab Facility. I had, had some braces on my legs and, and was using a cane uh, for, for most of the time when I was doing it, but I walked out of it without that cane and, and, uh, um, and achieved that goal and uh, then hitched a ride over to Omaha, where I spent two months at a place called Quality Living Incorporated. And uh, another wonderful, amazing place. Uh, can't, can't say enough about either of these two places. Um, but as I've, as I've shared with people, uh, Avera Hospital System saved my life. Um, the Madonna Rehab Hospital uh, brought me back to life. And the Quality Living uh, uh, incorporated QLI taught me how to live again. And they did an amazing job of kind of getting me ready for the reentry back into my life with my family, um, helping me do additional rehab to, to be at a better place where, um, I didn't have the braces anymore. I was able to do a lot of my occupational related things, started to work on computer skills and writing and, and just all of the other work related stuff that I was going to have to transition into. And, um, I hit my next goal, uh, which was to, to get home by Halloween and surprise my kids for some trick or treating. And so I got back here to Fort Pierre, uh, on October 31st. Um, uh, still had a lot of therapy to go and, and I still got to have a ways to go. Um, and I'm still working on it every day, but I'm just unbelievably blessed to be here sitting the way that I am to, to have been able to engage back in my life the way that I've been able to, and, and to have had all the amazing people along the way that helped me get to this, get to this point. Yeah. It's, you know, simply amazing story. And, um, you know, you touched on, um, you know, being in the hospital and, 
you know, how hard it had to be on your family. Um, but, you know, as a athlete, as a person, uh, as a man, as the, you know, the strong man in your family, um, yeah. laying there and, you know, not being able to move, not being able to really communicate. Um, did you, you know, you remember thoughts back on how tough that was or, or did, did those thoughts yeah. come later? Um, you know, uh, a couple of things. I think it's like a lot of things when you're in the middle of the fight, you're in the middle of the fight. And so you, you're not reflecting on certain parts of it. You're just getting from moment to moment. Um, <clears throat> and there's a lot of good things about that and a lot of bad things, uh, which is kind of some of the traumatic things that you go through. Uh, but beyond that, um, you also, um, your body looks out for you and, um, uh, uh, Frankly, you're on a lot of painkillers through a lot of that process, too, that, you know, d during my my uh, uh, deepest times of paralysis, um, uh, we've talked a lot about uh, there were there were um, some amazing adventures in my mind that uh, that I went through and and uh, um, and a pretty crazy time of reality and and in your head time that uh, um, things start to weave together in in kind of some some crazy ways but also i think your body looks out for you a little bit and and uh takes you on some of those those adventures um i will say you know two things for me um i was i was so blessed lucky to have um parents my mom and my dad who you know gave me a really strong uh core um some strong beliefs to build on in my life uh my dad was a real kind of quote guy and inspirational um messages and and uh um those kind of things and 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 like we've all said many times you know we we turn into our parents and in so many ways and and I've been really blessed on that front and so so I you know had been building those things that I believed in and those things that mattered most to me, uh, and both personally, uh, spiritually, professionally for, for many years. And, um, I was so thankful that in my greatest time of need, when I, when I was at that point of, you don't have time to think, you don't have time to now come up with, um, how am I going to deal with this? what am I going to rely on? What am I going to fall back on? Uh, I had those things there and, and, uh, was able to go to those things when I needed to be in the right mindset and put myself in that, that place I needed to be in, in mentally. And then physically, I was really, really lucky, really blessed to have, have grown up being in athletics, had grown up working out, uh, knowing what uh, hard work was. You don't have to be in athletics to know what hard work is, uh, but knowing what hard work was to to know what it's like to to have to try to do another squat or two to try to reach your goals, to to um, know what it's like to get up get up that day and feel so sore, but know that you got to go out and do the next thing you have to do. Um, uh, I can't imagine having to try to go through that, go through that experience without having uh, some semblance of what that's like or what that feels like, because it is, it's very much like having the hardest workouts of your life every day in many ways. Um, uh, you really are starting from scratch physically in in so many ways and uh um uh i have um i'm sure we've all we've all heard and seen the word privilege in, in our lives in in many different ways and, and i've always felt extremely privileged to have the the family and the life and the and the things that have been a part of it uh but those are just a couple more things that i was so lucky to have been able to rely on and go to uh when i was in the middle of all that yeah and you know, I was fortunate enough to uh, get down and see you down at uh, Madonna, and uh, you know, when I walked in, I wasn't sure what I was walking into, and uh, you know, didn't know where your progress was. You know, getting bits and pieces from you know the Caring Bridge, talking to your brothers and things like that. And you know, when I walked in and in your room, and that was in June, and uh, this is, I, I want to share this story to. Uh, let people know how, you know, obviously going from not being able to move in June, 
we uh, just had a technical malfunction there. But in June, we had. Uh, no worries. <laughs> Uh, you know, when I walked in, you were sitting in your wheelchair, and you described it at, at that point, you were um, almost like a somebody that had broken their neck, uh, almost like a car accident victim, so to speak. Um, yeah. And you were so excited to show me one thing, that you could lift your arm and shake my hand. And, uh, you know... That, that, I was feeling pretty good. I mean, at that point, I was feeling like I'd come a long ways now. I've seen some videos from around that time, and I look back and I was like, "Man, um, I still had a long ways to go." <laughs> but you know, amazing how far you've come since then. But then I also want to share. Sure. You know, you talked about the hard work. You know, we talked a little bit about the mental side of it, and uh, you know, kind of giving yourself up to let others take care of you. But uh, you know, then what I've seen you do physically, you know, is really outstanding work in the fact that what seems so simple to me obviously you know being relatively healthy you know we were in the uh, rehab room and you were you know just doing like some trunk twists you know working on your core and within yeah. two minutes you were just drenched in sweat and that's oh, how yeah. hard you had to work um, just doing those what we take for granted and you know you had to continue to do that how hard was that um, physically at that point to, well, you know, it, it to uh, again, it's, and I think it's a little bit of, you lose perspective on all of it because it's, it's crazy how, you know, so much of what we do is autonomic. I mean, every, everything from, you know, our breathing and, and, you know, uh, your eyes blinking and just the things that are, that are happening to, you know, me moving my hands right now and, you know, talking with your hands and, and just the little movements that you do and, and the shifting that happens and how even just sitting here, you and I, you know, we're balancing and our, our core and our back and, and things are all functioning in this, this perfect system, this extremely complex, perfect system that all goes away. You're, you're basically relearning, uh, kind of like I said, the whole, it's like your whole system gets rewired and then you have to relearn uh, how all the muscles connect to it. And you don't forget, it's like you forget how to do it. Your body just forgets how those things connect. And then you, you don't really remember how it actually felt to do it because you never thought about it in the first place. And so that's, that was the crazy part of it. Uh, everything every day was, um, you know, you're you're putting every ounce of effort into most every movement that you're doing uh, because it's it's the hardest you've been able to go to do the next thing. Um, and, and I think that's the uh, which it's not dissimilar than trying to build strength um, as you're, you know, in a college sport or high school sport and you're working out to get bigger, faster, stronger. Uh, it's just that you know, you're, you're in a place where you went from being, uh, you know, 215 pound, uh, 40 year old man to 155 pound, 40 year old man that is trying to build back up into the person that he was before. And so, um, I don't know, I looked at it as a challenge. Um, but again, that kind of comes back from the achieve, comes back to the achiever, the competitor, the um, the person that loved his life before and wanted it back and wanted that experience with his kids. He wanted to play in the backyard like I've been lucky enough to do since I've been home. Uh, the the stubborn uh, forty year old that wants to um, play city league basketball again as it comes around at the end of this year. Um, as long as we can, you know, socially uh, come close enough together, get past our social distancing by that point. Uh, so, you know, a, a lot of it comes back to uh, at that point, your body giving you a chance to recover. Because there's people, people that I went through my therapy with that, you know, they're still in wheelchairs. They're still, they're still dealing with trying to have recovery on a level that I was really blessed to have um, uh, the response that my body did. Uh, uh, and then at the same time, it's about giving your body a chance to recover and, and putting the mental, mental and physical effort into it that partners with it. 
you know, it, it's uh, it's mentality, it's attitude, it's your the physical things that you put into it. it. It's not dissimilar from how you talk to kids all the time, Tim. I know about you know what they're doing, being high school athletes or college athletes. Uh, it's a similar thing. Um, it's a it's a different, scarier thing, and it's a different point in your life. Uh, but those lessons all all relate um, and. I was really blessed to have a lot of things to fall back on as I went through it. Um, the other thing that I walked out of that uh, facility after meeting with you that day and, and visiting and getting to spend the time with you uh, through your, your different rehabs is I walked out there and I said, first of all, I hope I never have to be in a place like that going through what you're doing, first and foremost. You know, I don't. But if yeah. I ever am, I said, I hope there's somebody like Chris Maxwell in that place. And uh, I mean this by, because the way you treated everybody else, Chris, from the workers, the people that were helping you with rehab, but more importantly, the other people, the other patients that were going through and some that were you know, ahead of you in their progress and some that you know, were obviously struggling with their progress. But the way you made them feel when we walked by um, down, going down to the, the rehab facility or, you know, you showing me up in the lobby and, you know, uh, you doing, I think you were at the, that point, you know, you were doing, like, I don't know if it was a checkers game or what it was, but uh, everybody in there was better when they walked by you or traveled by you. And uh, where did that come from? How, where is that strength when you're dealing with um, all this stuff yourself? Well, uh, First of all, thanks for saying that, uh, kind of you to say. Um, uh, secondly, um, you know, a part of my, you know, I told you kind of having the belief system, the things that I've, I've uh, uh, built, built my life on or built things around. Um, uh, well, one of the phrases that I like to use is positive, proactive action. And, um, and I use that phrase in that uh, positivity can get you a long ways. Um, it can get you out of hole. It can get you jump started. Um, and we're all going to walk into a lot of negative situations. We're going to have a lot of negative things happen to us. And my attitude is whatever that situation is, let's, po let's step into it positively. Either way, we can't control what happens to us, but we control, can control the attitude that we bring to it. Um, uh, uh, so that's just something that I, that I try to do. And it, you know, it's, it's something I relied on a lot of times in my, my life. Um, you know, I love sports. I says I've been able to be a, a part of a lot of sports and, um, uh, I definitely had to, had to get by on my cunning and guile, um, hard work and a positive attitude in a lot of cases. I always, I wasn't always the most, most athletic, the fastest, the biggest, the strongest. Um, uh, but you know, as long as you work hard and have a good attitude, it's going to take, take you, uh, a long ways. Um, I think the final thing I'll share uh, uh, and it, and it was really, uh, it kind of caught me off guard when it happened. Uh, I was actually sitting in the, 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 um, the, the workout area of the gym, uh, there at Madonna in the acute rehab part of the hospital. And, and I was doing my workout and there was a new woman that walked up and, and she came and she was, she was talking, talking to, uh, to the therapist I was working with and, and kind of turned to the therapist, introduced me. To, to the woman and said, yeah, this is the, this is the woman that schedules all of your, all of your therapies all the time and said, Hey, you know, so-and-so, this is Chris Maxwell, um, uh, introduce us. And I shook her hand and she's like, Oh, Chris Maxwell. And at this point, you know, I had been at Madonna for, um, eight months or so. So she'd been scheduling me for things <laughs> for, for a long time at that point. And, and she said, Oh, you know, been meaning to ask you why why do always the, all the therapists all want to work with you why are they all all trying to get me on you know get get uh, you on their schedule all the time you know what why do they why do they like you so much um which i my first response was i said well that's really nice of you to say you didn't have to share that with me um uh and then and then i don't know i don't know why i said it to her but it is absolutely true as i said back i was like well i think they probably like to work with me because I like working with them and I like people. And, and 
frankly, that is who I am. I like people. I like engaging with them. Um, uh, my my wife and I joke, and I've, I've shared with her. You know, I'm the kind of person that will. I'm like a baby. I'll look at I'll look at the other person until they look at me and smile. I try to give them a smile. Uh, uh, I just like to engage with the world, and I and I like them to engage back with me. And and I think if we give a little smile and and uh, um, some positive eye contact, you never know if that might be what somebody needed that that day and uh it feeds me too so i'm not gonna act like it's some all altruistic thing that i do i mean it's part of what gives me energy every day and part of what makes me uh the best person that i can be uh but uh, uh that's kind of you to say tim it was kind of that woman to to share with me and um i just hope i keep doing it and i hope whenever i do it somebody else passes it on to somebody else absolutely you know we're we went a little over time, but we got a couple minutes here. Um, I'm wearing a Onward shirt, and yeah. these shirts were sold, um, that, you know, kind of as a fundraiser, as a way to support you, Chris. Um, maybe talk about, you know, you talk a little bit about your family, if you want to talk a little bit more about your family or the community, um, your, yeah. you know, Park City community, your Mount, Mount I mean, it's, it's all encompassing, yeah. really, you know, your pier, your Fort Pier. You know, what did yeah. that mean to you having the support of people through that time? You probably didn't yeah, notice, it, know it, a lot of it was going on, but yeah, I, you know, I, I didn't, and I did, and I got updates and, and, uh, um, uh, so I, I've talked about this as well along the way and, and you, you see things, um, uh, and kind of a, a theme that, a theme that I am using or I, took out of my experience really was this theme of what matters most. And when you go through something like I did, uh, you see both um, you having to make the decision every day regarding what matters most. And you also get hit in the face with the question of what matters most. You're asking the question and having to live, live that way as emphatically as you can. And um, uh, you also see that, and it's, you know, it's physics, it's, it's science, it's the natural world of momentum can go one way or the other way. And when it does, it's hard to stop it going in those directions. And there's things that when you go through rehab and recovery, um, you go through an illness that things can start ticking in your favor and start moving you in the right direction and things can start ticking against you. And that's um, your family showing up for you. It's the kind of insurance support that you have. It's the, um, uh, it's the, the medical things clicking the right way or going the wrong way. Um, that there's just things that, that they either work for you or they work against you. Um, there's also your mindset. There's the belief system. There's all the things that you don't get to just make up when you show up at that time. You gotta, you gotta have it and you gotta be able to fall back on it. And you really go back to the core of who you are. And, uh, for me, um, you know, when asked what mattered most, and I'll get to the community thing, that's just the long intro. Um, uh, the, you know, for me, believing in something bigger, bigger than myself, and I think for everybody, I would say that have that thing you believe in bigger than yourself. And, you know, I, I've got a, a belief in God and, and the uh, um, uh, God in everything all around us and in each and every one of us and us having the ability to tap into that and and a belief in all the beautiful things uh, around me and in my life um so have that belief of something bigger than you and just believe in nature believe in the power of something bigger than you um the second thing having some things you can rely on uh as i said my dad kind of had those affirmations and my my parents brought me up with a good set of core beliefs and and a built mine with my wife along the way and and those are the things I went back to and the things I relied on every day the things that reminded me when something didn't go my way that you know just be patient and and keep in working hard in the other places where you need to and this is for you you just have to figure out uh, what it is um, and so have those things you can count on your guidebook your rule book uh, 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 but then that final thing for me that matter most are it's relationships it's the people that are in your life and it starts closest to you uh your family your tribe your group of people and me my wife and my kids but then my parents and my siblings and my in-laws and you know 
all of that core that put their arms around me, but then um, the community as a, our, our friends, our community as a whole, um, those friends that I hadn't talked to in forever, those people that I didn't know were my friends that were rooting for me, and, and just the, 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 the ripple effect that, that goes out from there. And we all know the phrase, um, you don't know what you got till it's gone. Um, you know, I like, I like to turn that phrase around and say, you don't know what you've got until it all shows up for you. And, and I just had this overwhelming way, which I know many other people get that as well when they, when they have something traumatic happen in their lives. And, and, and I love that we're from places that are small enough and close enough that we do stand up and, and we know each other and we're neighbors with each other, uh, you know, we all know South Dakota is just one big small town, uh, and and that's wonderful, and it 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 means a lot, and and it matters so much, and and I I said many times, um, and I can't recount the number of specific things that people did for us. I mean, just it's over the things my Rotary Club did for us, and and friends, you know, my wife's best friend. Uh, taking time off from work to come be at the hospital with, with me so that Molly could actually get out of the hospital. Um, you know, j just the amazing story after amazing story. Um, you know, but, uh, it just is it, when those things happen for you, I think that's something that it, it's a very real sort of, uh, it, and there were so many people praying for me all through that entire time. Um, it's just such a real living, living proof or a li living example of what, when you know, when the whole world's praying for you, you can you can feel that energy kind of lift you up, and you know everybody's in your corner. And you don't even know you need to know everybody's in your corner. Just knowing a person's in your corner, uh, knowing that people are behind you, just changes the way you think changes the way you engage in the world and and all of those intertwined things they lift you up when you when you need it and you need it a lot when you can't lift yourself up and uh i just uh can't say thank you enough to to everyone and i'll never be able to thank everyone directly and and if there's anybody listening on here <laughs> that I haven't thanked that supported me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, last thing, uh, obviously we just, you know, we showed you where your mom lives right across the, the way there. Um, maybe just touch on real quick uh, what she meant to you during this time because I know she spent just a little bit of time with you. <laughs> yeah, my mom spent a, a little bit of time with me. Um, uh, uh, probably got sick of me, uh, even though she loves me no matter what. Um, uh, uh, mothers and their 43-year-old sons aren't meant to live in the same room together, tiny little hospital room together, for uh, as long as we did. Um, you know, we talked about earlier having uh, my uh, uh, my wife and four kids. Uh, wife works full-time. Um, uh, frankly, my wife and I talked about it, and, and you know, my, my kids need, my kids need in my wife more than I, I needed her. And that, that's not even, a uh, like I was independent or strong, you know, strong enough that I didn't on my side of it. Um, just, you know, what they had to go through, uh, as a family, we decided that my wife would, she'd come visit and she, she came for longer periods and stretches. Uh, but my wife who, or, or my, not my wife, my mom, who is, uh, um, retired, uh, preschool teacher from Parkston, uh, um, uh, put her put her mom hat back on. Not that she ever took it off, but put it put it back on. And and she she was with me at the hospital uh, down in uh, um, well she she was over at Avera in Sioux Falls, but then down in uh, in Lincoln uh, uh, for you know any of the time that that Molly wasn't there, my mom was there with me. And and uh, she she went through every day and went to all the therapy sessions and and dealt with all the ups and downs and. And dealt with a a uh, um, you know frust frustrated forty three year old son that that wasn't able to talk and was trying to get people's attention and trying to figure out how to make the next step and and take the next move forward and and uh, um, I'm sure I turned into my my 
14 year old teenage self a number of times and was was short and impatient and and all kinds of things with her and and uh, um, uh, if I haven't apologized I'll apologize <laughs> here publicly to her and thank her again for being there for me and and she's just always been a rock uh, in my life and my siblings life and you know frankly in the life of most most people from Parkston um, uh, just a wonderful amazing woman that uh, um, you know, I I just have been unendingly uh, blessed having having her as the example for me of how to be a parent and how to be a person in the world. Awesome. Uh, well, we got to get going here. I uh, just want to say, Chris, thanks for uh, sharing your time. Hopefully, we can get you back and uh, share some more stories. There's so many more. Um, yeah. You know, lessons and things like that. You know, we we uh, you and I have talked about doing some working. You know, doing some things together as well. Um, and I appreciate everything that you do for me. I appreciate your friendship. I appreciate uh, you being an inspiration and doing things the right way and showing people, um, you know, toughness in, in different ways um, and what it really means to be a man. And I think uh, there's a lot of people that have grow grown and, and found strength from your story, and I hope we can continue to share it. Uh, when we bring you back on, we'll share some more of those stories, and then we'll talk about Maxwell Strategies and all the great things that you're doing with that, too, because um, if you don't follow Chris on Facebook, you know, follow him and Maxwell Strategies on Facebook because doing some great work through your, you know, your, your work, um, but uh, it's, it's inspiring um, to a lot of people, so keep up the great work. Well, uh, Tim, thanks. Thanks for having me, and you keep up the great work as well. And and uh, um, just be, I'll I'll end it with be grateful, everybody. We're all we're all blessed, and and see that positive that's in everything you're a part of, and and uh, um, uh, everything will work out how it's supposed to from there. So just appreciate you include me, Tim. Awesome. You have a great day, Chris, and uh, you know, hey. stay healthy. We'll talk to you, you soon. Too. We'll, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow on my uh, show, I have Logan Roth um, uh, from Salem, and uh, he is uh, my cousin, and uh, we're going to talk about our distracted driving presentation that, that we have. I'm way ahead of schedule. I've got two other guests scheduled. i got Coach Craig Doty scheduled on um, Thursday and Ed Molitor of the Molitor Group out of Chicago um, scheduled on Friday. So a, a couple of good shows coming up. So have a great day. Thank you.